Hey guys, Davin Lindman, dermatologist. So you'd like to know more about the super common condition known as acanthosis nigricans. And this condition is more and more prevalent as the decades go by. So it's more prevalent now compared to what it was 20 years ago and more prevalent than 40 years ago. The reason being is that with our diet and basically a body mass index, especially in teenagers, coupled with certain endocrine disorders, the um, incidence rate of acanthosis nigricans is through the roof. So it's a very common condition and it's best sorted out by a multidisciplinary team. In other words, a team of doctors and dietitians to help you. So let's dive straight into it. What is it? Basically, it's a condition that produces darkening of the skin. The darkening of the skin can occasionally occur on the face, but it's super common around the neck area, uh, the sides of the neck, the back of the neck, but also in areas such as the underarms and the groin. Occasionally, you can have facial acanthosis nigricans, and that usually occurs in men, usually with a higher BMI and usually darker skin type. Now, the treatment for acanthosis nigricans is tricky. Do lasers play a role? The answer is marginal. So I often don't see these cases because they are either refer to my medical colleagues for management, or I see the cases where someone wants to have a go with lasers. So there's a, a lot more effective ways of treating acanthosis nigricans. The first thing you can try is topicals, in other words, creams. So in the reports, there's certain things like retinol or your tretinoin. So in other words, your retinoids, which can help. Now, the downside about retinoids is that they can cause skin irritation. So if you apply it in your face, it's not too bad. But if you apply it to folds, for example, around the neck area and the underarm area and the groin area, generally speaking, your retinoids can be really irritating. So here are a couple of my hints. So you might want to start with a 0.1 concentration of retinol. Thereafter, increase it to 0.2%. If that fails, see your GP or your medical dermatologist for a prescription of tretinoin. That's really hard to use because tretinoin is more powerful than um, retinol. So you might want to moisturize the area first, apply it to um, dry skin, and you might want to give it a couple of days before you reapply. So you have to use a little bit of common sense. You put an area like a test spot, for example, on your underarms, and if you don't have any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, or flakiness, you can increase the amount, and you can increase the area, and then thereafter increase the frequency. So my advice, start three nights a week, and if you don't have any symptoms, gradually increase it. It's common sense. Now, if retinols don't work, or if retinols give you marginal improvement, you can also use a um, exfoliant. Now, this is where you've got to be really careful because if you exfoliate your skin, you compromise your skin barrier function. In other words, your stratum corneum gets removed, which means the skin is more permeable to different types of medications. can be a good thing because you increase the absorption of uh, retinol or retinoids, but it can also be a bad thing because you can decrease your skin's irritation threshold, irritate the skin, and hence you may get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which makes the whole thing a lot worse. So if you do have irritation in those areas, certainly back off all of your skincare. So when we talk about um, topicals, certainly your retinoids are up there, your salicylic acid that can be used as an exfoliating wash. So CeraVe makes a good one, Neutrogena makes a good one between 1.5% um, for CeraVe all the way up to 2% for um, Neutrogena. If that doesn't work, you can try with absolute caution if you know what you're doing, is to use glycolic or lactic acid washes. Um, and they range between 5% all the way up to 15%. But those, that, they should be used as a wash, but not leave, uh, leave on. If you leave on, it's really tricky. I know it can be done. We do occasionally do it, not for AN, but we use glycolic acid and lactic acid. But you need to neutralize it very early. And for areas like your neck area, for example, where it's thin skin, you've got to be super careful with what you're doing. Then we work on third-line treatments. Our third-line treatments include things like your vitamin D, your cassipatriol, which has been shown to work in some cases. But by far the best treatment for it is not seeing a laser derm like myself, not seeing a medical dermatologist, but having a holistic, um, I guess, change of lifestyle. And that's with weight loss. Because PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and certain other conditions like Cushing's, they can all predispose to acanthosis nigricans because they've been, it's associated with insulin resistance and hence um, it increases your IGF-1, in other words, insulin-like growth factor. So acanthosis nigricans can, is very common. It can be uh, associated with things like skin tags as well um, and excess hair, in other words, your hirsutism. 
or can um, be associated with androgenetic alopecia. Now, there's loss of hair due to hormonal causes. So AN itself is a metabolic um, syndrome, and that's why I hardly ever see any cases. They often go to the endocrinologist and medical dermatologist for management. Now, your endocrinologist or your medical dermatologist may start you on something like metformin. Metformin is super safe. Um, you're looking at about 500 milligrams um, daily, but you can increase that to something like 1,000 milligrams at night and maybe 500 milligrams during the day. Your Physician will discuss the risk-benefit ratio and monitor your glucose um, with that. My suspicion is that with um, the newer drugs, something like the semaglutide, right, which is your yeah, Zampic, when you get a greater amount of weight loss, my gut feeling is that that's probably better for acanthosis nigricans, but certainly the literature will come out either this year or probably next year in regards to using uh, these drugs or these these injections in the context of treating um, multi multi-system uh, conditions such as PCOS, obesity, and uh, increased BMI. So when it comes to lasers, this is where um, I guess I come in. However, I tell all patients, um, your effects are going to be marginal. So even when we use really good lasers, hybrid lasers, Pico lasers, Q-switch lasers, they all have a very low hit rate. So my gut feeling is that they improve things maybe 20, 30% at most in after five to six treatments. Um, and that's combined with topicals. So from a management point of view, even though I do a lot of pigmentation, when I see these patients, I refer them off for medical management and I certainly will discuss with the patient that lasers can help. It's marginal improvement, um, but there's a lot of lifestyle factors which I've illustrated that can make a big difference, much bigger than what a laser jock like myself can do. Guys, I hope you like that and um, gives you some information about management of a super common condition.